we run Electric Power 750 uh, test for external um, recruit, uh, recruits. So we decided to create our own system, our own um, uh, tech check uh, to test the skills online. So what we did was we used the Moodle um, system as a basis. We just loaded one test, but we are going to allow people to load any test that they want to add. Um, C++, C Sharp, SQL, etc. There is, if you select your tests, we only added one test for now. C Sharp Basic. You can either log on as a guest or as a created person. I'm not logging in as admin. I was taking just now to how easy it is to actually um, create and change stuff. Focus my on this, please. <laughs> okay, I'm really going to take you through the test. <laughs> oh, <mom. laughs> okay, so I'm just going to answer a few questions. You can configure it any way you want, multiples on one page, etc. What we do is we actually um, store a lot of information to be stored properly um, in the database. In the end, we can mine as much as you want. Um, I'll chat about phase two just now, which we didn't complete. I'm not looking at the questions. I'm not some of them right, some of them wrong. These nine different question types that you can add, but it should be about it. Um, I just added two, so this is a match matching question. And in the end, it tells you which ones was answered. Um, before I'm going to go through and submit, what we also did was, Leron built a bit where Leron is going to come a demo, where you can currently, but you can add any language, Leron, Java, C++, whatever. Yeah. We can give them a specific problem and they can code. And then on the fly, it's going to parse it, validate the code, and Leron, tell us a bit about your... Okay. So this is a web code editor, but I... Basically, just customized for this use case. Um, in here, you can type in C sharp. It's got syntax highlighting, syntax highlighting. And what the test, um, the learning management system does is it configures this thing with uh, a set of expectations, um, which is basically about the question. So in this question here, I'm I'm expecting that. Um, well, basically the question is uh, create a class method uh, that is only visible to uh, subclasses and all classes from inside the assembly. Uh, call the method uh, foo and uh, use the, the convention of lowercase and return a boolean. So here's the correct test. And if I evaluate, I get 100%. However, if I start, if I don't know what some of the parts of the test should be implemented as, if I do the wrong access modifier, I get 60%. If I don't apply the right convention, if I'm stupid enough not to read the question, I'll get 40%. And then if I don't return the right type, uh, in I get a wonderful 0%. That should actually be minus something. <laughs> I mean, if you get the, if you get the <laughs> method name right, you may get 20% even if everything else is completely wrong. So what I've done here is basically set up a, an expectation, which is a method expectation. I'm basically saying access modifier, what access modifiers need to be applied, what the method name convention should be, or what the return type should be. Inside here, yeah, the hardest part of it is actually um, implementing the expectations. Uh, the implementation is fairly straightforward. It's uh, take the code, I compile it in the background, and then I can inspect using reflection. I, I can expect what the members are on the type. Uh, and of course, if the code doesn't compile, I was going to ask them if there is an exception or not. So if I try to return true, then I get zero. So this actually compiles and it can run. So what I can do now is extend this and say I want a method result expectation that has a routine in it, and the routine has to return a particular value, and in the background I can actually call that method, with some parameters, and check the result. Okay. That's it. Is there something the other one like this that doesn't do? Yeah, they don't. That's real.
So what we did was, I'll take you through the, the rest just now, but what we did was, as I said earlier, we also added a, um, it's not included yet, uh, cell phone uh, pulse scanning. So because we know exactly when you start the equation, when you end the question, it's currently locked in the database. Um, um, the idea is, and we'll in phase two next, yeah. implement it. Can you yeah. think of the device? It's going to show us just now, yeah, but, um, but while I talk, so what happens is, it takes 10 seconds, so you put your finger on. I've, I've created web services around this. So as soon as it connects, it calls the web service and you can start the test. Every time you let your finger go, I stop the test because you're not on. Um, and in each question, we measure the average. So as soon as there's a change in the pulse rate, you send it through, and then in the store box, or the views, we then calculate which question was it when the pulse went higher or lower. Okay. So that shows you the stress around it. But you also lock which I see as disappeared right now on this side, another color, is, is it technical, uh, practical or theoretical? Um, and that we calculate on the question. So when you set up the questions, I'll show you just now where we set it up. You can add ratings to each question, and you can group it in such a way that, depending on which one you answer, in a multiple choice, for instance, it tends to lean towards practical or theoretical. So that's what we did with that one. Um, okay, so let me just go through quickly here, and before Darby shows us, you submit. In each question, you can provide specific feedback. So now it tells the student or the person which are correct, which are incorrect, and you can add any amount of feedback to them to say why it is. But we just did it basically, and in the end... So it's nice about this, is this is already implemented right now, since yesterday or this morning, in a place where everybody can access it. Okay. And then you get your little report with your results. So just to show you, where you add questions, it's really very simple, very straightforward, the way we implemented it, is, I'm going to edit my quiz, and you add your questions that you want to add, and then it pops up, all the different types that you can add, it's plugins, so you just install plugins as you want to add more questions. Uh, there's one that we didn't install that allows you to actually answer correctly. It in, uh, increases the complexity of the next question. It keeps mm -hmm. increasing, and then when you answer wrong, it goes back one level of complexity. Stuff like that. So you can really create much, very nice things. On this, and then you select which type, and then... Uh, okay, the obvious thing that you show is this pulse monitor, which we didn't get out in the graphical so. as the cool thing was actually, can I compile, because I got the source code on GitHub, yes, but you do, uh, you don't compile it via an editor, on the tablet. <laughs> Android ID. Yeah, there's the code. Then you run it. And all it does is it uses the camera on the tablet. And then you just see there at the top it picks it up. Yeah. And there we go, 71. It's cut off right there. Yeah. Yeah. Stressed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't know, it, it, there's, a, there's a couple of prob technical problems. You need to hit your finger on here and you need to yeah, you type code. Yeah. Um, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, but that was only with multiple choice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and as I said, the, the last thing we did was. Well, Darby has got the code for Action Skip 3 as well for the eyeball tracking. So you can see when you get into a question how uh, your eyes jump up and down and which questions you look. Well, approximately, because um, you have to kind of have regions on the screen. There's, a gap, there's, some, issues. Uh, there's some issues as well, that's why we did the finish. But we're, we're definitely going to do that. That was the last one I showed you right there with the grid. I can show you afterwards. Okay, so that's it. Great. Cool. Uh, how do you expect people not to be 